Hello down there. It's time to wake up. Hello. Wakey, wakey. There you go. That's it. One foot in front of the other. Ah, here he is, the mystery man. It's good to see you on your feet. I thought it only polite that we have words before I depart. Listen, I'm sorry I had to use a rather large dose of canis root extract. It's always difficult to judge how much of the stuff to use when it's diluted in wine. It's a lot of guesswork, really. But you seem like a fit fellow. So I was liberal with the stuff. After all, I have no idea what your powers are. Would not do to have any surprises. You, sir, are a clever one. <laughs> you almost had me fooled. How do you feel about a bit of professional critique? Hmm? Very well. I shall provide it anyway. After all, there are learnings to be had in every experience, especially the failures. My first suspicion was your grace. Don't get me wrong. Sailors have a grace of movement all their own, but it was clear to me that you were no sailor. Well, you definitely know your way around a ship, but with nothing better to do at sea than people watch, well, don't get me wrong. Your performance was amazing. Not sure I could have done it better myself, but you know what the clincher was? <laughs> You're not going to believe me when I tell you this. It was at dinner. You picked up your knife in a backhand grip. Ah, oh, you quickly caught your mistake, but the knife and the glance at me to see if I had seen. That was it, my friend. The jig was up, and I knew right then that I would have to deal with you. You have really caused me a lot of trouble. You know it is strictly forbidden for one assassin to interfere in the contract of another. Of course you do. Everyone knows, especially the Bar Tong. Anyway, I took the liberty of going through your things, and what did I discover? You, sir, are related to my target. Now it all makes sense. It's very noble of you trying to save your father or... No, he's your uncle, right? Whatever he is to you, it doesn't matter. What matters is that you have failed. Unfortunately, I have been forced to kill the entire crew and run the ship aground on the ice to be sure my mission is not compromised. But that is on you, my friend. I hope you are satisfied. Since I am sure you are aware of the rules, I will not belabor the point. As you know, I am not allowed to kill you. However, I am free to allow you to die in a tragic accident at sea. I am sorry you were not able to save your uncle. You must love him dearly to go to all this trouble. This entire episode is unfortunate. I feel we could have been great friends, you and I. Oh well, I bid you good day, my friend. May the Spider Queen invite you into her loving embrace. Goodbye.
If you came here seeking a story, then I regret you shall be disappointed. I haven't the time, and you haven't the stomach for my truth. The world is dark, and to navigate its darkest paths requires a certain dispassion that few possess. Passion, guilt, shame, these are emotional constructs created by mortals and reinforced for millennia by institutions of society, government, and religion. These are nothing but irons that shackle us to needless suffering and mediocrity. I have spent my life avoiding the prison of emotional detachment. There is no right and wrong. There is only the right decision and the wrong decision. A choice to be made upon weighing of facts, evidence, and of course, self-interest. I am a survivor. Many would say rigid, even cold-blooded. But one cannot do what I do without a certain amount of detachment. Detachment is what this man lacked. It was his weakness. There are two things I am certain of in this instance. One is that he and I could never have been friends. And two is that he entirely misjudged my motivation. I am not interested in saving his target. I am interested in taking on his contract.